Welcome to Beyond the Ball Podcast. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? And welcome to another episode of Beyond the Ball. And I'm excited because every time I get the opportunity to have a conversation to where we can do what the whole purpose of this show is to do is to help provide resources, help provide tools to help student athletes succeed beyond their degree. And man, I'm I'm really excited about this conversation. I didn't even tell our guest today. Uh, I, I did my little did my little Googles and did my little research, and I was like, man, this brother's story here is it's it's just a story of of strength. It's a story of of hope. It's just a a, a real story of, of perseverance, man. Humility. I can I can just go down the line. Uh, just 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 breaking down uh, the story. Man, but I'm just grateful today to have the opportunity to talk to Mr. Caleb Egan's. Caleb, what, what's what's going on, brother? What's going on, man? Man, what's what's going on? First off, man, uh, thank you for having me, and thank you for the kind words and the compliments, man. I really do. Uh, I, I appreciate that. I really do. I appreciate that. For sure, man. For sure. So I I, I was I was looking at your story, and I saw three sports, four schools. Talk, yes, sir. Talk, talk to us, man. Talk to us. Yes, sir. So, uh, so I started off uh, coming out of high school, went to Texas A&M University. Um, you know, I, I got the opportunity and, and was blessed to have the opportunity to do football, you know, track and also powerlifting. And um, and so, you know, coming out of high school at a small, you know, school, I didn't realize I'd be, you know, getting that opportunity to even, uh, you know, just experience the things I've got to experience. And so, um, you know, I was just thankful, you know, through it all and um with the with the you know passing on my mom you know that led me to and and then have graduated you know that led me to getting my first master's degree which was at east central university and uh suffered a uh, injury there you know missed the season and then uh and i came back to texas and i was at uh mary Hardin baylor that's where i got my second master's degree and that was COVID year and so uh that's when I was like, man, you know, you know, I really want to, you know, uh, enter the draft. I had a lot of, you know, people, you know, contact me, you know, that was draft eligible and agents and things like that. And so um, that's when I ended my uh, season at East Texas Baptist University. And that's uh, I went to the 2022. So this past draft uh, from e, from ETBU. And so, uh, yes, sir. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If you're a student athlete or you're a staff that support them, this is just for you. Listen up. I wrote a free ebook helping student athletes to successfully transition post graduation. It's seven things, right? Seven things I laid out. I talked about, of course, having a LinkedIn profile. I talked about having a way to develop themselves. And I talk about five more things in this ebook. So hit the link just down below, download it. It's for free. You will thank me later. All right, it's Jonathan Jones. I'm out. Right back to the episode. So, what, what made you go for three degrees, two masters nonetheless? Like, Cause I tried to get one master's, okay, <laughs> <laughs> and and getting a master's degree is not easy. So like, what like not like what, what was it that made you say, all right, well let let me first go get the first master's, and then after that you're like, well I'm I'm gonna go just get another one. Like why yeah. why? I well can't. well uh, my first master's was actually in a sports administration, and so uh, one thing that I've always wanted to do was you know I wanted to be around sports involved in sports. Whether that's um, you know on the admin side or or on the admin uh, side or even on the field, and so um, you know I definitely want to be you know head coach, athletic director, even director of operations is something I was you know interested in, and uh, I had some conversations you know with family and 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 uh, I guess you could say mentors, and so uh, my second master's degree was in curriculum and instruction, and so um, in the education you know uh, department, and my first master's was also in the education department, and so. Um, Again, I want to be able to give back, inspire people, and, and, and give hope. Um, and I really want to do that, too, uh, you know, for, for kids, you know, and kids who have a passion, who have a dream. And so uh, thinking about maybe being an athletic director, uh, not even – I'm sorry, not athletic director, but um, superintendent or principal, like, at a, at a school. And so that's, that's where the curriculum instruction came along. Uh, okay, okay. Man, that's yes, dope. Sir. That's dope. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Yeah. So so when you hear that you're the first player in NFL draft history as, to be a power five athlete in three sports and have three degrees, including two masters, like what does that make you feel? Uh, man, um, 
honestly, to be honest with you, anytime, you know, there there's history to be the first to ever do something for one, that's, that's always a blessing. Um, but really, truly, man, just through, uh, it, it went by so fast and I never really even thought about it like that. So everybody, you know, kind of started telling me it was more so just like, um, I just got to get it. You know, I just got a ground. I was just, uh, you know, I was just, uh, it was just the work, man. I was just putting in work and, um, you know, I wasn't stopping, you know? And so, and it's weird cause it feels like, you know, when I accomplish something or do something, uh, the outside, you know, people, they see it as an accomplishment, but I just see it as, man, I, I just got to do more. And so, uh, Man, that's 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 just how I've always been. That's that's how I was raised. That's real, man. That, that's real. That's real. So so going through, you know, these these four different universities, mm -hmm. right? These, these these four these four different locations. Mm -hmm. Like, what has that taught you? Because I know you said, you know, well, you 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 didn't say this. I, I actually saw this, but in high school, you're you're looking at a class with you know graduating class anywhere from like 40 to maybe 60 students. Exactly, right? exactly. And then you go and transfer to a university where we're looking at that many students in a class. Are we man, at a man, I've, I've had, uh, my first class was actually at Texas a and It was in chemistry. I've had, uh, I wanna say it was like about 500 to 600 people in my in, in one class. <laughs> so yeah, it was, it was definitely, definitely even a culture shock. It was even a culture shock to me cause I was like, man, but uh no man it, it was it was uh it was a cool experience again um it was definitely amazing it was like whoa but for some reason man i, I just kind of had this calmness and um uh, i wasn't even really shaken by it you know so but it was definitely at first it was just like man it was it was it was almost overwhelming mm. bro 600 students is a lot of students okay <laughs> yeah i know i know yeah I think I think uh, my graduating class at A and M I want to say it was forty some thousand something like it was it was crazy it was cra yeah it was, it was a crazy amount of number the freshmen that come in and the yeah the freshmen that come in yeah when I came in my freshman class I want to say around it was around that much yeah it's crazy okay <laughs> <laughs> all right so okay so we we talked about you talked about Texas A and M we mm -hmm. talked about uh, you know you talked about Mary Harden Baylor. So, so through the, like through the four schools that you, you had the opportunity to attend. So this was D1 and this was D3 or this was everything in between. Like yeah, you got so, to... uh, yeah. So man, that, that's not, you know, interesting thing about my story is I was able to um, see sports in a realm from all different divisions. So obviously coming out of high school, I went D1, um, you know, was there four years, graduated. Then I went to D2 and then um, finished out D3. So I got to see what it's like all across the board, um, not just as far as the sport itself, but the 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 um, the coaches as well, how the coaching is, um, you know, the players, um, the mindset, you know, it, it's different all the way across. And, you know, I've been, I, I learned a lot, um, you know, uh, good and bad, you know, I, I learned a lot. And so uh, that's another thing too, I, I feel like, you know, kind of helped me, um, as far as you know in life it's just being able to see different perspectives different aspects talk a little bit more about the difference between because you know everybody is d1 or bus d1 or bus, exactly. bus yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And, and, exactly. and, and, and like, like like just talk about the difference of mindset between division one and and then trickling i don't want to say down but then trickling across like just, just talk a little bit more about that because i don't think uh people have a have have the experience that you've had so many people can't speak to it from the way that you can exactly um one of one of the biggest things that i've seen uh from division three and division one even division two is like you said a lot of people have the d1 or bus mindset but uh there's a lot of ballers a lot of great players in division three and division two and at the end of the day it's, it's all about opportunity and um uh, with with success it does come hard work but uh, there's also a, there's also a lot of luck in that. I guess you could say luck, blessings, um, you know, timing. It has to be. It almost has to be perfect for everything to really gel. And so you see a, you see guys, you know, who's at D two or D three that very easily, very easily could have went D one, right? And then you see guys, you know, in D one that very easily could have be a D three or D two guy. They just 
you know, had the right coach to come look at. They had the right game. They had the right connection. And so um, it really and truly, when, when you look at it, especially from a skills position, as far as DBs, receivers, you know, running backs, um, it's not far off. You know, it's really not far off. Uh, I think I think the biggest, the biggest, I don't want to say drop off, but the biggest distance is when you look at like O line and D line. Um, obviously, mm-hmm. Division One, those dudes is 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 for real. You know, uh, yeah, those dudes is for real. They're athletic bigs. They're not just big guys. I'm talking about they're guys with good feet, good hands, um, high IQ. Uh, really, you know, ath- athletes who are you know. O line, D line, and then obviously to the quarterback. But outside of the quarterback and O line, D line, if you just look at skill position guys, uh, you know, I mean, you could you could really move those you know guys you know everywhere. In, in my opinion, one thing that I seen, and also too, man, the mindset is so different. Um, the mindset is different from 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 a uh, good and bad standpoint. Uh, one thing that I had to deal with as far as being you know at the at the smaller schools was. Uh, you know, any time that, you know, you try to be successful or you try to, I'm not going to say do too much, you just put in extra work. Um, you're going to, you're going to have guys, I'm not, I don't want to say hate on you, but they're going to look at you different. You know what I'm saying? And uh, Division One, you don't have that, you know, because everybody has a spotlight. You know, everybody, everybody's a dude. Everybody, you know, has cameras in their face. Everybody's. So, um, you know, that's, that's one thing I didn't know I would have to deal with that I unfortunately did have to deal with. But um, other than that, man, um, yeah, I was, I was able to learn a lot from, from uh, each university I was in. Um, and, and there's some that I've used, uh, you know, in my life. And even like, you know, like right now, like I'm, I'm, I'm using it. I got you. I got you. Yeah. So it's, so it sounds like you talk, you talk about level, a level of adversity, right. And, and I think there's no nobody better than you to just just talk about like talk about adversity just just in your story and talk just 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 talk a little bit about adversity as a as 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 a young leader. Um, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. uh, you know, get through it. You know, that's that's my biggest thing. Um, you know, find a way to get through it. Uh, one of my best quotes, you know, is from uh, Michael Jordan. You know, he says. Uh, uh, if you run into a wall, don't turn around and give up, figure out a way to climb it, go through it or work around it. And so um, my biggest obstacle I had to face was my mom passing away. That was the biggest one I had to face. And so that was my second year when I was at Texas a and And so, uh, you know, I, I, I had already registered in my first year. And then when that happened, it was just like, man, you know, so, you know, that kind of sent me back against some out of my control. Um, and then when I was at East Central University, again, I was supposed to be in the 2019 draft. But I ended up getting hurt uh, literally weeks before our first game. My spring game was great. Fall camp was going great. Everything was really looking up. Um, and I went down with a uh, groin injury, and I had two sports turnings, so I had to get surgery missed the whole season. Um, again, man, that, that sent me back, and I kind of really struggled spiritually because I didn't understand, you know, why I was going through that. And so, um, again, you know, that's something I, I had to work through and, the recover um that was even mentally too you know i was just like man you know so you know fought through that and then even even you know been at the other schools um you know after that is it's, it, you know people are so different and um i've learned a lot about people and no matter how much you show love you know you can still not get that in return you know there's still gonna be somebody who's gonna hate on you or you know it's gonna say oh you know you're not this or you're not that and so or no you got to prove yourself and so even even going through, you know, that part, which is out of my control, it's just like, man, again, that's just something else you got to get through. And um, one thing I, you know, I learned is any time that you're, you're leveling up or you're trying to do anything better, um, you're always going to have somebody um, who's going to either say you can't do it or, or not going to like the fact that you're just putting in the work. You know what I'm saying? That you're going to have those haters. And that's somebody I never understood because I always want to see people excel. I always want to see people do great um, do great things, um, you know, and so that was something else too. I'm just like, my, you know, why, why am I getting hated on if I'm not showing no hate? You get what I'm saying? So again, um, you know, just some, you know, just something I have to work through. And so, um, I, I'm, I'm blessed because it's made me who I am today. And I feel like a lot of times gotta, you know, put things on you or I'm not going to say test you, but he'll put you through situations that cause you 
who you need to be in this life. And I feel like he's done that with me. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, I, I get that. I get that. So with, you know, with, with, with all of the adversity that you've seen and the, the challenges that, that, that you've had and, and the opportunities for you to grow thus far, what, what would it mean to you for your name to get called and then you get to walk up on the podium and you get to hold the jersey and take the pictures and, and everything. What, what what would that mean for you and your family? Well, uh, so I actually, man, so I actually, uh, funny you say that. So I actually got some trials coming up with some NFL teams. Uh, my first one is going to be January 6th. Um, so I actually was in the 2022 NFL draft. Um, I was talking to some teams, went undrafted, um, even, you know, had some XFL showcases and, and things like that. And that's another thing, too. You know, there's a lot of opportunities now. You have the NFL, then you also have the XFL and USFL. And so uh, my thing is, man, you know, I'm just going to, you know, just keep working and um, become a better version of myself tomorrow than I was today. And so um, I, when opportunities presents itself, um, I'm just going to, you know, just go kill it, do the best that I can and, and uh, you know, let God take care of the rest. Most definitely, man. I, I... I I love your perspective. I I really love and can can appreciate can can appreciate the perspective the perspective that you have, and and then I want to I want to take a take a pivot. I know we talked NFL. I want to take a pivot and go back to college for a second because okay, you, you okay. were you you were one of the first you were one of the first D three student athletes to secure a, a, a NIL deal, man. Yes, sir. Yes, like, sir. T- like just just. Just, just talk a little bit about that deal and talk a little bit about what that deal meant to you. Uh, man, that that really uh, meant a lot to me because uh, when I kind of seen everything unfold um, with the whole NIL, that's that's another time that's like, man, if I was at a D1 right now, you know. And so um, I'm not going to say I didn't think I would get any deals, but the fact that, you know, I was the first, you know, D3 player and then end up getting some really great quality ones. Um, Dairy Queen was probably my, my biggest one. And again, that was just, you know, that was based off of more so, um, you know, who I was as a person in the community and, you know, also, you know, coming there from a, from a, you know, a D1 program, uh, to East Texas Baptist and really, truly, man, the owner, you know, of Dairy Queen, he, uh, he, he, he's a great guy, man. He's one who actually tries to help. Uh, student athletes and so he basically asked around he was like hey who would be you know good candidates you know I want to be a part of this NIL deal you know help give back and help these student athletes and so my name got thrown in the mix and um he ended up you know calling me and um you know we went through all the you know paperwork with the uh with the school and things like that and you know I was able to secure that deal and that was really a blessing and um for me it's, it's not so much just you know the money side of it it's more so um what it represents um, I was able to give a lot of people uh, hope and encourage them and say, hey, you know, even though, you know, you're D3, you know, you can still get a deal. You know what I'm saying? And uh, again, that's, you know, the mindset is different. You know, I was I was able to be D3, but with a D1 mindset, if that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I think that I, I think I think that definitely makes sense, because one, one thing that um, like I think can fall by the waist by, by the wayside a little bit is that just because somebody might be. A, they might be currently playing junior college or division three or division two, wherever it might be. If they ever remove, are they, are they never have the thought of, Oh, I can be a D one player or they show up like a professional every day. They put in extra work. Then yeah. You know, then certain things will never materialize because they, they never allowed themselves to even go there. But you know, j- just with you, having the having the veteran experience right being a veteran guy in the locker room but then showing guys the way that things are supposed to be done you know the way you need to practice the way you the way you work out the way you eat the way you train and all that then i think that elevates a team just by seeing the way you know the way you lead and everything like that all right so now uh caleb what what i like to do now i like to go ahead and transition and this is the segment of the show that we call dear student athlete Right. Okay. And this is the opportunity okay. where, where where you get the opportunity to just share, you know, what like what's a tip, what's a nugget, what's something that you would like to share to a current student athlete right now? Man, I uh man, there's there's so many. I would I would say um one of the main thing is is uh 
you know, there's there's always going to be things that's that's uh, may not necessarily work out in your favor at the moment. But um, if you just keep going and I guess you weather the storm, um, you're going to come out on the other side and uh, everything's going to work out, you know, the way it should. Um, you know, some things you got to look at it in a, in, a, in a spiritual sense as well, as far as God preparing you and God getting you ready. And um, because at the end of the day, um, if it's for you, it's for you. Uh, nobody, you know, can take that away from you. And so my thing is, is, um, you know, try to try to block out the noise. Keep solid people around you, even if that's one person or two people. You know, keep solid people around you um, and just always be positive, you know, uplift, encourage others um, and, and, and stay in that circle. You know, stay in that circle. Uh, you know, don't stay in the circles. That's always, you know, talking bad about the coach or talking bad about, you know, other people on the team or just complaining. You know, just stay, stay, stay in a good group, stay in the, in the positive group and um don't again, you know, don't be in a group that, you know, you got haters and they're hating on other people, you know, be be around the people who's who's always uplifting everybody else and encouraging everybody else and, and bringing along guys, you know, uh, be around leaders, be around leaders. Yeah, that's that's definitely my. Uh, definitely one of the biggest things that I, I would say. Excellent, man. Yeah, excellent. You, you definitely just dropped a million dollars worth of game right there. You dropped a million dollars. For sure. Worth of game. For uh, sure. For sure, man. I I appreciate that. I know many student athletes will be able to benefit uh, from them from those nuggets you left. And now we're going we're going we're going to lighten up a little bit and have a, have a little bit of fun. Uh, on okay, the show. cool. And cool. this is the segment I like to call this or that. Right. So okay. Uh, okay. you're gonna pick one option or the other. Caleb, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's get it. Let's get it. All right. Here we go. Pancakes or waffles? Uh, let's go. Pancakes. Chick fil A or Popeyes? <laughs> ah, Chick fil A. That's tough. Okay. <laughs> okay. Home gym or a fancy gym? Home gym or a fancy gym? Yeah, like, so, like, were you working out in the home, your home gym? Or are you working out like at, you know, 24 hour fitness, something like that? Man, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say home gym, man. You, you, you can get work in, you know, wherever. I'm going to say home gym. Small classes or big classes? I'm gonna say depend on the class, but I'm gonna say small classes. <laughs> and then, and then, lastly, audio books or podcasts? Podcasts. Fair enough. Fair enough. What What's one of your what like? What's one of your favorite podcasts that you listen to? Man, I'm I'm, I'm gonna say I, I listen to a couple podcasts. The only reason I say podcasts is because I feel like they're they're more informational and you learn more, you know, from a podcast. Um, you know, all podcasts really are is just, uh, you know, like little nuggets, you know, tidbits, uh, you know, ways to improve, you know, yourself. And so, uh, yeah, that's, that's that's why we went, you know, podcasts. Fair enough, man. Fair enough. Fair enough. Now, who who's who's somebody that, you know, that, that you feel is doing amazing work, somebody that you want to you want to shine the spotlight on and, you know, somebody you like, John, this person's pretty dope. I want to shout them out because I think you should bring them on the show next. Who would that person be for you? Uh, you know what, man? I want to say um, one a, a really great teammate I've had. I, I've, I've had some some great teammates, um, but I know one. He's actually, I believe, he's in the middle of transfer right now. But a uh, really positive dude, funny guy. I probably have to say uh, his name is Davion Carter. Uh, I played with him at East Texas Baptist University. He's a guy that uh, easy could be at a D one. Easy. I'm talking about. Talented all the way across, but good attitude, good dude. He's from a small town too, Mahia from a small town, and so I, I, I would say I would say he's one. And also too, there's uh my uh, Dairy Queen uh buddy. Uh, her name is Bree McShaw. Uh, she plays soccer there at uh, ETBU, and uh she had she was a, a female representative for the Dairy Queen. I, I would say you know she's doing her thing too. So both both of those, yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Fair enough. You might might have to plug me. You might have to connect me with him. So we can oh, yeah, for sure. Can happen. For sure. Yeah, so we, I definitely we, we, will. We happen, for sure. For sure. Man, well, well, Caleb, I appreciate your time, man. I appreciate you rocking with us. Please let the people know how they can uh, find you, follow you, and, you know, continue to follow your journey. Absolutely. And so uh, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at dflash underscore Egan. So that's dflash underscore E-A-G-A-N-S. And then also you can find me on Facebook. Is Caleb Egan's and also too, 
I uh, I have an inspires page, and so basically it's just a page that I uh, created, really like a like a you can say uh, I don't know movement business whatever you want to say. It's called Caleb Egan's Inspires, and it's basically just to lift up and motivate you know other people. Uh, we live in a world now where you know hate is is really prominent. Um, you have a lot of people even you know committing suicide and things like that, and and uh, basically it's just a space to where. Um, it's a lot of positivity, you know, and, and uh, encouragement. And uh, it also, too, it's a space where maybe if you, you if there's people out there with dreams and goals, um, there's people to say, hey, you know, I believe in you. Because sometimes that's all you need. Sometimes you just need somebody to also believe in you because, you know, and so I, I think that's big, too. And so uh, you can find my Inspires page is CE Inspires. Um, and that's going to be. Uh, Instagram and Twitter, and then uh, Facebook is just Caleb Biggins Inspires. There we go. There it is, folks. There it is. He gave you the, he gave you the contacts. Make sure to connect with him. Make sure to to find and continue to follow the journey. And if you were watching this video, I'd encourage you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button on on our channel um, to where you continue to stay up to date with you know more stories, strategies, and success, and more episodes as we continue just to find dope individuals doing really amazing things. Uh, just sharing their wisdom and their insight. Caleb, my brother, once again, thank you. I appreciate you taking time to, to stop by. And uh, family out there, until next time, this is Beyond the Ball, where we help you succeed beyond your degree.